What's going on beautiful people? Welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. Today's build is gonna be a little bit di well, is it? Is it really gonna be a little bit different? Yeah, okay, it's gonna be a little bit different because I'm trying to put as many plants as I can in one tank. Like, I want a massive collection, different plants dotted everywhere, in their own little pockets, but like, you know, everywhere. <laughs> little bit of hardscape, not too much, because we want to save a lot of room for those plants, but yeah, it's the tank behind us. So it's gonna be this tank here, which is four foot in length and like two foot back, two foot high, roughly, maybe a little bit less than that. <laughs> I don't know, I'll put the stuff up on the screen anyway. The tank's looking pretty good. It's, it's not quite there though, there's some, Horrible bits here that need repainting. Uh, they got a little bit damaged on the move. Yeah, the whole stand, to be honest, just needs a fresh lick of paint. This was one of the first stands I ever built, so it's not, it's not my finest work by any means, but it got the job done and it's strong. It's very, very strong. I mean, you can literally see, you know, when I did it again the second time, way, way better. Look at the joy, <laughs> look at that. Nice, neat finish. <laughs> and that's how I started. And then actually I went from this one onto this one here, which so you can see, this is when I actually start again a lot better at doing it. Um, I don't even need the braces in the middle for this one, which meant I could have another row of like, yeah, this isn't important. <laughs> so yeah, let's get the tank tarted up a little bit. It needs a little bit of cleaning that as well. It needs a light on the top and then we can get scaping. Okay, there we go, look at that. Nice and clean now, looking fresh. Let's get a light hooked up. We can actually see what we're doing. Oh, it's very bright back there, hang on, let me adjust. Yeah, there we go, let's get a light hooked up and get the tank clean, and we can start on our substrate and actually get building. Oh, look at this, I've just received a massive, this is the wrong side to film it from really, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just doing a, uh, a water change on the Red Forest Aquarium, and it's the perfect time to talk about the products. Yum, 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 yum. So today's video is sponsored by API and Aquarian. As many of you guys know, we've been together now for like three years. Uh, I absolutely love all of their stuff, and I know you guys too, because they sell out constantly all the time of all the products. So we're gonna be using all of these things you can see throughout the build. Uh, first thing we're going to be using is the root tabs, which will lead us onto the substrate system in a minute. But everything we've got here, we've got AccuClear, we've got Leaf Zone. So the only fertilizer I use is Leaf Zone, and my plants look great, you guys know that. We have got Aqua Essential somewhere here. That, there we go, Aqua Essential as well, which we use to treat all of our tap water. Quick Start is just perfect for starting new aquariums. I never get fish losses because this, this stuff's magic. And I think given the color of all my fish and how amazing they look, the food from Aquarian speaks for itself. All my fish look amazing. So the whole setup helps with this on top of good nutrition as well. And yeah, you're off to a winner with all of these products. Throughout the video, obviously we're gonna be using lots of them. I'll explain more detail as we use them. But for now, let's get back to the build. Yeah, anyway, let's get a light on this tank now. I've got just the one. I've ordered it a while ago. It's here now. So there we go, we are using the Chihiros WRGB2 and it's now highlighting just how dirty the tank is. Gonna have to get that clean first and then we can crack on. So I find the easiest way to actually clean these is to use like a, a non-stick cleaning thingy <laughs> and just literally go over everything. It should take most of it off. Some stuff that's really stubborn, you can just get a razor blade on, but most of it should come off with this. actually saying that I've just remembered there's some proper ground on algae here and it's been sat for like a month so I will need the razor. This is actually one of my favorite tools as well because it does just slide over all the algae really easy. I don't know why I didn't just use this to start with to be honest. <laughs> So 
So that's the tank now nice and clean. We can get on with the substrate system. Right, it's time to go shopping. And by that, I mean come around here and eat the Nutri Base. Oh, there we go. Nice full bag. So for this setup, I'm going to use a whole bag of this Nutri Base. This stuff is absolutely brilliant. I've been using it quite a lot recently. Basically, it's like porous rocks, a bit of sand, a load of like dried soil, and uh, it's got iron, potassium, it's got everything in it that you need as a great base layer for your planted tank. <laughs> There we go, that's all now spread nice and evenly. On top of that, I like to put some uh, aquatic pond soil just to boost it up a little bit. It's an optional extra, you probably don't really need to, but I like to anyway. It just makes sure you've got everything you need in terms of nutrients. I'm gonna use it sort of sparringly. Just as a little boost, little nutrient boost. Now this is when the magic happens. I'm gonna be adding the root tabs now. What I like to do is use a whole pack for this size tank, so that's 10 tablets, but what I'll do is I'll crush them up and turn them into a powder and then sprinkle it over everywhere. This might seem like overkill, but I've already done it on that tank there. Yeah, I already did it on this tank here and we have had such good results with it. Like all the plants are growing crazy good. And this is after a big trim back. I just did a massive trim back on it, remember, because it was just full of reds. And then it's just a case of sprinkling the powder evenly over everywhere, because I'm going to have plants all over this scape, so we do need it to go everywhere. Right, all the nutrients are now taken care of. That is going to be very punchy. Um, and now we need to lock all of that down so it's a sand capping on top. I'm not entirely sure what yet. I'm just going to see what I've got lying about. So this is just some recycled gravel, sand, aqua soil. I think it'll just be a really nice base just to bring up the level a little higher. Again, this is not the finish. This is not the finished look at all. It's just, let's say, bringing it up so we've got more to plant into. So that's the substrate sorted. Uh, it looks kind of flat from this angle, but I can assure you it tapers up Oh, you can't really see there either. It tapers up to about double the height of the back there, which is plenty of room for planting, planting into. But what I need to do now is start building a hardscape, but I don't want anything too complicated because we want so many plants that you're not really gonna see that much of it anyway. Just something for a little bit of interest. So that's a definite possible start, but nowhere near, nowhere near what I think will be correct. You see what I'm sort of going for, something flowy, but look at the amount of space it's taken up down the bottom of the aquarium. Barely anything, but we're getting some big impact in the air. That's not right though, I'm just gonna keep playing until I get it right. So quite a few of you often ask me, how do I come to the conclusion that like, or the finished decision? So in the case here, you can see me fiddling around with a couple of pieces. Nothing really sort of felt right. I flipped this one around because it's like facing the centre then, so it's coming from that back point outwards. I was going to add more and then I thought, you know what, for the first time ever, less was more. <laughs> but it suits the idea of the tank, you see. There's so much open space for planting everywhere. This is lifted in the, in the air, so it's not even taking up, again, planting room on the bottom, but it also doesn't cause a load of shadows either. And I think that just works really well. It's quite sort of exciting to look at and imagine it with all the different colored plants and that all around it. I do need to put some rocks in just because I know for sure that this is gonna float. So I'm gonna put an anchor point on there and there and I'll glue the rocks to those and then it should stay, well, it will stay down. So I don't want anything that's too drastic on the scape. So I'm just gonna go for some of these darker pebbles here. They've got good detail on them, but they are darker and they've got rubbish all over them on the floor now. So that one and that one look good. You're not really gonna see them to be honest because, uh, because the plant's gonna be covering them up. So I've already taken up a bit of an area there I don't really wanna do, but oh, that one fits in perfect on there. I need to bring this out a little bit though. 
because then there's room to plant behind it. Okay, yeah, there we go. Is that not the, uh, the most simple hardscape ever? And then just a bit of tissue paper crammed into the gaps and then add some glue, a couple of drops. And what it's going to do is just completely saturate the uh, tissue paper and it should all go hard very quickly. If you don't want to wait like I don't, there's this activator stuff which may, makes it basically go instantly hard. Some smoke coming off there. That smoke is the reaction taking place, which means that it's instantly like solid. Now, obviously those two white bits there look pretty ugly, but it won't matter. We'll stick some Anubius or moss or something to them. And it's all set now, ready to go. We can actually get planting straight away. The only problem is though, I'm still waiting for my plants to arrive. So I've got to wait for that package. It should be here soon and then I can get cracking. So it's actually been a week now since I first laid in the hardscape and a substrate system. Reason being, I got way too ahead of myself and I didn't have the plants. The plants have now arrived, so let's get them out and take a look. Oh, I've also taken delivery of a load of awesome substrates and like sand and stuff from Colombo. This is, I've got red, I've got the red version there of that stuff that's in the uh, in the better aquarium. More of the Nucci brace, and I've got more of their Aquasaur here as well. And then this is from Amazon. I'll get that in a minute. It's another load of different like decorative substrates. Oh, <laughs> and this. This is our plants from Aquafleur. Oh my God, they're so good. Let me get them out. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about when your plant delivery comes through. And every single one of these plants is gonna be able to fit in this tank, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered like two of everything. So there's two Rotunda folias, look, two of these sort of lotus plants, Crypt Parva Tula, Lo uh, Rotala Wilici. There's loads and loads here. And there's actually some I've never seen before used. Orange juice, Rotala orange juice. I've never actually had that. Cryptocarini Flamingo. That's an interesting one. Really looking forward to that. Um, Amania Pedicisibida Gold. Anyway, this one, again, really keen to see how it turns out. The Myriophyllum Matagrossusense. Uh, the red variety, I've not had that either. So yeah, there's so many here, it's gonna look so good. So this is gonna take a lot of work and a lot of prep, uh, but you know, I've got my work cut, cut out for me, haven't I? <laughs> Better get started. Right, here's what I've done. So this bench is 120 centimeters and that tank is 120 centimeters. It's also roughly the same depth. So what I've done is just lay everything out on the table and that's exactly how I'm gonna plant it in the tank. So we've got good reds, dotted in different areas for full coverage. Then I've made sure all the taller plants are at the back, the mid-ground plants are in the mid-ground, and the foreground plants are in the foreground, obviously. So that was actually the easy part. Now it's uh, now it's time to take everything apart. We've got some amazing plants here. Look, look at the quality of all of them. So this is all Aquafleur, and it's just so nice. We've got good, good, solid stems all at the back. They're gonna stand up straight away and look good. They will need to convert, obviously, because they've all been grown out of water hydroponically. But look, oh, we've got some lotus, different types of nymphia lotus down here. Uh, I'll put that lotus this side, and then we've also got the uh, Taiwan variety over here as well. That beautiful Rotala indica, look right in the center there, that's gonna be, that's gonna look really good. And as I say, I can't wait to see how this uh, Cryptocorony Flamingo will look. Oh, and I've got a load of boosters over here because these are gonna be going actually onto the wood. I'll also put a couple of pieces of Java ferns, different types, and Anubius, different types as well. So we're sort of covering those areas. But there is so much work to get on with, I, I better get going. Okay, we are getting there. I've got like a sort of conveyor belt thing that I've, I'm going through here. So take the wool out, squeeze out the water, put it there, ring goes there, basket goes there. It's working really well though, because I've, I've only got like a quarter left to do um, and the boosters and the bits on the wood as well. Um, although I'm thinking at the moment, I'm only gonna put a tiny bit on each one because it, it, it's looking so good seeing that wood with all the uh, plants. Yeah, look at that so far. And that's like, they're not even growing in or anything and it's already starting to look good. But I'm thinking it might be too much green if I just cover the wood. But then the point of the tank is as many plants as possible. No, stick with the plan. The wood is having plants on it. <laughs> Do 
Woo, that is all of the plants planted, the, the planty plants, um, as opposed to the epiphytes that we're now gonna do all over the uh, wood as well. I'm still gonna, I'm gonna clump them if you like. I'm gonna keep them in areas because I still wanna see some of that wood because it actually looks really good. Yeah, there's quite the mess on the table as well. We are done. Um, that took a long time. And as I was going around picking out certain things, um, certain plants that I knew I wanted to add, I was finding other ones that I forgot I had at the back of plant tanks. <laughs> so there's even more than I even thought. Like, look at this. It's just absolutely nuts, isn't it? I need to get some water in there though, because they're gonna dry out and I'm fed up with spraying them down. So let's just get it filled up and take another look. And then we can sort out the filtration. Obviously, given the amount of plants we've got in here, I'm gonna need to fit the CO2 system as well. This will be just the second one that's got it. I'm only doing two tanks, this one and the, uh, the better one. It's the only two of CO2 in this whole system. It's good to have a couple just to show what can be done. But yeah, let's just fill this right up. So we interrupt this filling up of the tank because I've forgotten a load of plants. So these specific plants we've got here all came in bunches, so I chucked them into the water. I've completely forgotten, but this is perfect because it means I can just place them as they are and they'll just continue to grow. Right, we are full. Um, I'm leaving the filling tube there for the minute because I always make the mistake of packing that away. And then I've got to put the filter, attach it to it. And then that pulls in water and then I've got to get it all back out again. So what filter are we going to be using? Well, I just so happen to have an Awaze Biomaster Thermo Thingy Bobby Jobby here. <laughs> um, it's the medium size one. I, I can't even remember what that is. 600, 650, something like that. There we go, filtration sorted, lighting sorted. I mean, tank, plants, and all of that sorted. We're missing one thing though, and that is CO2. So I'm gonna be using the Colombo CO2 system again. How do I get into this? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so first time I opened this, I looked at it, I was like, oh, there's so much to do, I don't really know what I'm doing. It's actually really simple, just follow instructions and it goes in really easily. And it is the same system that I'm using here on this tank. Look at these neons that are all coming over. Yeah, on the Better Fish Aquarium. And it's working so well. Look at how good the plants are. They're all purling right at the moment. There's so many bubbles on top of the water. But yeah, it's a really simple setup and uh, it's just perfect for someone like me. Um, I don't like to rely on outside sources for my studio. A lot of people use like the CO2 cylinders that you go and refill. I don't like the idea of having to go somewhere, I just like this one. And the reason I like this one so much is because you can just buy the reactor refill, the ingredients, you pour them in, it's making CO2, done. It lasts for like over a month, it's perfect. Um, I may have just turned it up a little bit too high. <laughs> yeah, we don't need that much. <laughs> now that is fantastic. And we have got a lot of plants in there, as you've obviously seen. So we've kitted out that substrate, but the root systems of these plants aren't established yet and they won't be for a good few weeks. So in the meantime, we are gonna be using Leaf Zone. Now Leaf Zone is the only fertilizer I use. It's the only one I've used for a very, very long time as well. And I think my, you know, the quality of my plants speaks for itself. So just follow the instructions on the back. You don't need more than what it says. So for this size tank, I need four capfuls. Two, three, four. And I always do a little bit for luck. <laughs> there we go, look, we can see all that mixing in. And that's basically all we need to do for now. So it's now been about a week and a half since we first put the plants in. They are absolutely thriving and going crazy, as you'd expect. I mean, we've put CO2 on it. My plants grow fast enough at the best of times, but when you add that as well, it's like a turbo boost, it's crazy. So this is where we are at, look. I mean, everything's doubled, even tripled in size now. And nearly every plant is doing so well. There's a couple that are experiencing a tiny little bit of melt. One of them being one of the crypts that I put down here. And you can see, look, it's just melting off. But there's all, like, the new growth, you can see it. There's tiny little leaves already appearing in there. 
and uh, it's gonna bounce back. It's just something that happens with some crypts some of the time. But not all of them though, because look, look at this Crypt Flamingo, which is just starting to get its pinky leaves in the middle there. They're all coming up through. No mount at all on that one. And then next to it though, this Pogostamon Halfare, Halfare. Uh, there's a little patch of mount in the middle there, but the rest is doing really well. Hopefully that doesn't spread. If it does, it does, you know. What can you do? You just let it sort of bounce back. But I mean, overall, it's just crazy, isn't it? It's just. It's just doing so good, every every plant. Like some of them I wouldn't have expected to see any growth, but look at these Echinodorus rows in the middle. All those red leaves are brand new. They weren't there when we put the, put the plant in and it's absolutely loving the conditions. The Rotala macrandra at the, at the back there, look. You can literally see the top part of it is the underwater new growth in a week and a half. It's crazy, right? And all those background stems there, look, all stood right up, looking good. We've got roots coming off of them a lot. Oh, you might notice the CO2 checker is blue. Um, it's because I've just come in in the morning. I should have probably given it an hour and let all these plants sort of wake up. And yes, they do wake up, believe it or not. Um, CO2 has only just come on, so obviously we've lost a fair bit overnight. I mean, it's going to happen. I've got a surface skimmer, which means it's just breaking up the surface all the time. So CO2 will gas off in the system, but it's fine. By the time, like an hour or so, that'll be proper green and uh, everything will be perfect. And as you'd expect, and why it's one of my favorite plants, is the Limnophila is already just growing up overtaking everything. You could barely see it when I put it in there um, and now it's bigger than everything. So it, it does run a riot in the tank, but that's one of the reasons I love it is because it absorbs so many nutrients. So for instance, if you've got a new setup, I just would just chuck that in every new setup, even if you don't want it there permanently, just to help with getting it started. It's gonna use a lot of nutrients in the water column, even in your tap water, and just help um, you know stop nuisance algae. Every sort of tank normally when you start has algae. Not this tank for some reason. Now I've not even done a single water change since we set this up. There's no livestock in it. I didn't think it was necessary. And yeah, I've not seen any reason to, so I didn't bother. The only area I'm really seeing a little bit of algae is on this wood here. And there's also a little bit of that sort of fluffiness, you know, like the fungusy stuff, a little bit of algae, but that's nothing that a few bristle nose, some amanos and that won't take care of. And I actually want to go to the shop now and get the fish for this tank. I've got a cool idea for what I want. Um, I don't want to go really crazy with tons of fish. I'll say that now when I get there, Matt's like, what about these? What about these? And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the good news is this is settled in so well now that you know, we can put a good amount of fish in it, keeping them small, obviously, and it will do really well. The fish poop is only gonna add fertilization to the plants. They're gonna grow even more, and it's all just gonna work together. It'll be amazing. Let's go get them. Hi, Hi Matthew. Hi, Matthew. Oh. Hi, how are you? <laughs> good, thank you. Uh, that's an awful start. That is a terrible no. start. This is more of a start than <laughs> how, we normally do. How unnatural. Hi, yeah. Matthew. Hi, Matthew. How are you? How are you doing? Morning, and I'm doing stock <laughs> take. I'm like, yeah, I'm I've on. just turned up after telling Matt two days ago I'd be here, and he was like, why are you here? What are you doing here? Yeah, I remember now. I so, do remember now. Remember what I said to you? No, it was <laughs> black mollies. That's yeah. why we stood here. Yeah. Now you can't see them against the black background. We've got no. about 10 in there. Yeah, that's it. I well, maybe a few more. Once we yeah. start getting the lights and moving them around, yeah. there might be a few more. They're really nice ones though. They've got some good size. We've got males and females, which is wicked. Yeah, that's perfect for them. So it's for my four foot, massively highly planted tank. Nice. And I was gonna just go with those, but since since we started talking, you you started thinking we should maybe get some other stuff in there as well. Yeah, I think it'd be nice to get a yeah, a bit of a mix. There's lots of different things that you could put in there. What will go well, do you reckon? Bear in mind we've got every plant, every colour. Well every fish though. <laughs> it's One literally of everything. What's cool? Tell me something I mean I think the black mollies Everything's are cool, don't get cool. me wrong. But like what do you think will go well, black mollies? That's a, everything. That's the problem. Tetras, barbs, are you looking for something different? Are you, or are you thinking um, of mixing colours on the mollies, or? If we mix colours, we'll get cool babies. This is it. So you've got like the tuxedos, or the black, we call them black gold dust mollies. So they're like black and orange or yellow. They're really, really cool. So they're a little bit different. We've got pure orange down the bottom. I quite like these. I mean, it's another solid color. Yeah. So that could be quite cool. It could be quite stark and quite contrasting. Yeah. The other thing we have got, have we, got we might have some decent sword tails in. That could <gasps> be quite cool. So oh. like live bearers, bigger yeah. live bearers, we're all together. Could Are sword tails and yeah. molly similar? Sort of. They're, so they're both live bearers, but they're Distant cousins, I suppose, is the easiest way to describe it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sword tails are more akin to a platy, okay. um, and mollies are a separate thing. Oh, but, I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. very similar. I think 
So Facilia, and then you've got... Yeah, no, the, the, I was just trying to track the Latin names in my head, but yeah. Oh, don't. I Latin. can't even keep up with the non-Latins. Yeah, they're all live bearers, so we'll go with that. They're all related in some way. Ah, these are the sword tails. Pineapples. Pineapples. Oh, Reds. wicked. I like these. And blacks. But blacks we've already got over there. Yeah, so. we got the... If anything, the I would... Reds. Yeah, I'll go with the reds of those and then the yeah. blacks of the mollies. Yeah, I think that could be really cool. Instead of, like, having orange uh, mollies and black mollies, why not orangey-red sword tails yeah. and black mollies? Yeah, and that keeps then the strains clean, so you'll have, in theory, red babies and black babies. Yes. Which could be quite cool. I mean, I'm sure they breed out other things as well, don't they? There's got to be some, something both, in there. Yeah, both of them will might throw back to different colour forms. So that's interesting. Yeah, quite, absolutely. Yeah. You never know what might come through. Okay, I'll need clean-up crew as well. Is that okay? Amanos, Brissonoses, uh, Otto Yes, please, the standard. So on and so on. Yeah. At the moment, the tank is perfect. I've got, not even done a water change, nice. but obviously I haven't had any livestock. livestock. But the good thing is, obviously, live bearers are vegetarian as well, so they will trim and keep the algae down. Yes. You know, the yeah. duppy tank that we've done in here, that hasn't had any cleanup crew added to it, and there's still no algae in there. Because they're Maybe grazing. a little bit of tufty on the um, wood, like it normally gets. <laughs> a bit tufty. Yeah, a little bit tufty. Let's just talk about your attire today. I see you've gone for just non euro You're not even going for your merch, you've not even gone no. for Maidenhead merch, you've just gone... He does what he wants. Yes. <laughs> I'm just trying to like blend in, to be honest. Like, I'm, yeah. I've so, got a lot of stock taking to do. I so see. I want to look You're yeah. incognito mode. That's this it. is. <laughs> you didn't see me. I had a fake beard on earlier and some sunglasses. You didn't see that. <laughs> Why would you need a fake beard? Everyone you... knows this beard. Oh, that's the it's yeah. Black and long. That beard's too famous. Absolutely. I'm not kidding though. When I did come in, I didn't know it was you. Did you not? <laughs> no. Yeah, see, it works. It works. <laughs> oh. Okay, flat. these are wicked though, like, um, can we get some proper sword? Is it the same ratio you would do with, like, guppies? Normally, yeah. Same life bearer ratio? Generally, there's more females than better, so okay. yeah, we can get some nice males with Better? Sword. No, not a better. Not a better. Oh. No, we... Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, one male, few females. And one? We well, no, but, like, the Two, ratio. The ratio, sorry. Talk about the ratio, yeah, you're just going four foot, <laughs> one male. Right in the middle. Oh, sorry, really? Yeah, that's it. That's what you're allowed. That's if that's, I mean, like I said, I don't know anything. I, don't, I do know about fish now. I just don't you know, do know about fish. anything like as much. So you're you're my expert, and if you say that's right, that's that's right. Yeah, one male, two females, and we'll do for a nice group of them. Exactly. Matthew has just pointed out, Just we were just chatting about it. I thought, well, yeah. why don't I tell you guys about it? It's got these new <laughs> fish in here, which I've never seen in here. I spotted them actually on Saturday, but it was very busy, so we couldn't talk about it. But they are so nice. What are they, Matt? So they're a Sinspillum, which is a very large type of essentially Central American cichlid. Um, they're probably a quarter the size that they will be eventually. <laughs> um, they should get to about 30 centimetres, sort of 12 inches fully grown. Amazing colours already. Yeah, and gorgeous fish. They, and they get like a grey-blue back to them, the gold belly, and then this bright red head. Um, but yeah, they were just put in here. We had them. They weren't selling. We wanted some big fish to fill this tank up eventually, like in the top reaches, yeah. um, because we haven't got as many big fish in the top. So those guys were just prime candidates for it. Oh, look, look at those. Yeah, gorgeous, aren't they? Absolutely beautiful. Some male and female as well. You female did have pups, there. didn't you? But what, what? Yeah, we've sold all the you pups. Sold, Actually, oh, you sold them? Well, let's say sold them. Um, Tropicaria Zoo, he, um, he oh. took a couple down to there. So Sean's got a couple down at the zoo now. Um, awesome. Yeah, took a couple to the other shops. So yeah, we haven't got any pups at the moment. <laughs> That's just chilling. Feed. Feed yeah. me. Just stop talking and feed me. Just what's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And this one's coming up. Friends. Fish friends. <laughs> I love how he doesn't care. <laughs> he didn't even flinch, did he? Nah, it's fine. All right, we have got a good amount of fish there. We've got, look, there's the clown plecos. Look at that, looking good. We've got the Amano shrimp in this one. We've got Otto Sinclis in here. We've got the long fin bristle nose in there. Sword tails, black mollies. Given 20 minutes or so, just to temperature acclimate. People have laughed at me for saying that because uh, I heat the room. So they're thinking you can put them straight in, but they've just come 20, 30 minutes in my car, which is a lot warmer than in, in here. So they just need to, um, just, you know, just get used to the tank, just make it, there's no rush, is there? There's no rush, give it 20 minutes, we can release them all in, oh, it's gonna be so good. Right, it's been like 20 minutes, I, I cannot wait any longer, let's put them in. I think we'll start with the cleanup crew and everything like that, and the plecos, and yeah, and just release all those first, and then we can release the two sort of main stars of the show, the sword tails and the mollies. But yeah, we'll do them individually, I just think it's a little bit better that way. So first of all, in go the Amano shrimp, we've got about 10 in here, if, 
if they get off the net. Um, that should be enough, 10 to 15 I think there was. If we had an algae issue, I'd probably be adding probably double that. But because we've got it under control and they, they'll probably just keep on top of it and keep it at bay. If we get a problem, I'll probably add a bit more, but 10 to 15 to start with, good amount. And then up next, we've got six auto sinkless. Again, I feel like that's just enough at the moment, given the, how the tank currently is. If we need more, we can get more, but start off with six, should be fine. And then four clown plecos, which I've never kept before, but they were recommended. Off you come, there we go. Oh, they look wicked. Apparently they're more of a sort of pleco that you'll see a little bit more often. So not all the time, but when we do see them, oh, brilliant. Look, the Amano's are going straight to, to work on that, uh, that melted crypt we can see down there, brilliant food source from straight away. And we've then got three long, thin bristlenose plecos. These are gonna be going in a different tank and they've gone, <laughs> um, but they're kind of just in here at the moment until it's finished. But they'll do a really good job of keeping everything good whilst we're waiting for the other tank to be done and then I'll move them across. And now for the stars of the show, the black mollies. Whoa, there we go. I don't actually know how many we got in the end. We just kept scooping. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, about 16. That's a good number. Oh, they look so good straight away. I love that. I wasn't liking the tank this morning because it was empty, but now we've got the fish in there. I'm loving it. And now for the stars of the show, given the vibrancy of them, the pure orange sword tails. Whoa. The Chihiros light makes them pop like crazy. It always does with any of the fish this color. Look at that. So we've got two males and the rest of the females. They are glowing, aren't they? Oh, that looks so cool. I mean, straight away, the black, the black mollies are brilliant. Just the way they sort of hang together. They're so understated. They're just so jet black. It's not often you see something like that. We can see the clown plex. Hopefully they stay out and we can keep seeing them. That'd be cool if they do. It doesn't matter too much if they don't know because they'll be like a treat to see. So currently we've got the black mollies huddling around here and the sword tails seem to be like sort of more sort of top end swimmers, seems to be so far. I'm pretty sure the mollies though in time are just gonna be all over the tank. Now, although the tank's nearly two weeks old, it's not had any livestock in it. I've been chucking in an odd bit of food, so they call that ghost feeding, to try and build up some sort of waste that can generate beneficial bacteria, but there won't be anything like the amount required for the fish we've just put in. It's a fresh setup. So what we need to do is add something to the mix. It's my secret weapon. It's one of the best products from API. I use it all the time. I am, of course, talking about Quick Start, API Quick start where would i be without this i mean i've been using it for years now like i say it's my cheat code it means i can start all these tanks regularly with no problems at all i don't ever get fish losses everything works out perfectly now granted i've got heavily planted tanks and i test every day on new setups just to make sure all the parameters are where they should be and they always are but you should have a test kit on hand just to make sure but yeah quick start if you guys are struggling with like fish losses and things like that get yourself a bottle of this get it in your water. It just makes the whole process a lot more simple because I don't know about you, but I don't know how to do a full scientific experiment for weeks on the run up to put my fish in. It's just, it's very, very complicated, this whole cycling thing. This takes all the guesswork out and it's so good. Absolutely love this product. So yeah, always shake your bottle up and read the back. It will tell you how much to put in. But for this tank, I'm going to need about six full uh, capfuls. One, two, three, four, five, six, and as always, some for luck. <laughs> this is quite interesting. Look, straight away, the black mollies are biting at the, uh, well, it's, it's not a plant, let's face it, because it's all the rotted stuff. So they know the plants that they can eat and it just, it's, yeah, they're saving me a job, put it that way. So they'll leave all the fresh and healthy plants, I'm, I'm hoping, anyway. <laughs> I've had them before in a planet tank and they've been good. And they'll just eat anything that's sort of breaking down and, and, and just kind of rotting and not doing good. They can eat them all if they want though, they're beautiful fish. <laughs> oh, I've just had a thought. Can you imagine if I come back tomorrow and like they've just decimated all the plants. They've all been eaten. Oh, stay tuned. <laughs> so the next day I came in and I was expecting to see a few of the plants pulled up, you know, some, some of the leaves nibbled on or something like that. But I was pleasantly surprised to see that everything was absolutely perfect. In fact, it was better than that. The mollies had completely got rid of any of the sort of rotted plants, that, the crypts, for instance. They have been chewed right back to just the good leaves that are left, which is absolutely perfect because it means we, have, we haven't got like degrading organics just sat in the water. They've been used as food. They'll then be like pooped out, put into the substrate and used by the plants as food. It's like an absolutely perfect little relationship between the fish, the plants, the water quality. Uh, it just works so well. So 
So the main idea behind this tank was to have a farm or a plant farm tank, if you like, one that's got tons and tons of different stems and trimmable plants that I can take out and to put into other setups as I build them. There's nothing better than, you know, established underwater plants going in new setups. It really does make a difference in terms of success early on. But then I thought, well, if I'm creating a planted tank, I want fish in it as well, because it all just helps. And it, you know, to be honest, for me, a tank without fish is it's just nowhere near as interesting. I know some people are all about the plants. I'm somewhere in the middle. I like creating an, a great environment, but that environment is kind of useless without the inhabitants for it. So yeah, anyway, it's a long-winded way of saying I wanted to put fish in the tank. <laughs> and black mollies, I've wanted them for a long time. They stand out so well against these plants. Absolutely love it.